sada zvanično... Jel me čujete, da? Da, da, da. Nego mi se pojavilo ono da se snima. Pa mi je za trenutak prekinulo. A, tek, 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 ja nisam, ja se nisam... Nije dobro, jel me čujete? Ja, da. Dobro, dobro, zato što sam bio stavio na mjutik i... U redu je sad. Dobro. Evo sad zvanično svima dobar dan. Moram da se predstavim, znam da me... Mislim da danas veći broj učesnika i učesnica me ne poznaje, pa evo, znači u to ime ja sam Ljiljana Vogavac iz Inicis Trauma Centra i u ime svih članova i članica Evropske ženske mreže protiv seksualnog nasilja, upravnog odbora i u svoje lično ime, želim da pozdravim sve učesnice i učesnike današnjeg skupa, I posebno moram da naglasim da pozdravljam naše dve vredne prevoditeljice Radmilu i Anu, da njih nema, ne bi ovo ni funkcionisalo sve kako funkcioniše već, sad se mogu kažem, već dugi niz godina radimo zajedno. I zapravo, evo da pozdravim našeg člana Evropske mreže protiv seksualnog nasilja, profesora doktora Slobodana Savića sa katedre za sudsku medicinu Univerziteta u Beogradu. Imam veliku čast, moram da kažem, veliko zadovoljstvo i radost što je on danas sa nama. On je inače dugogodišnji saradnik i saradnik Inci Trauma Centra i da kažem, kako kažemo, drug. Tako da kažem, danas sam stvarno jako radosna što je Slobodan sa nama. Ja tebi sad, Slobodane, molim da se ti sam kratko predstaviš i da počneš sa tim što si za danas spremio za sve nas. Izvolite. Hvala ti, Ljelja Mnogo. Thanks a lot. And I will start with short introduction and presentation of myself. First of all, I wish to thanks to the European Women's Network Against Sexual Violence because I'm really honored to be a member and especially honored to be a member of Ethics Committee of this very important network. And today uh, our topic is very important. Uh, it, uh, title is Criminal Offenses Against Sexual Freedom with a special emphasis on sexual violence against children. A few words about myself. Uh, my name is Slobodan Stavić. I'm a medical doctor and uh, in uh, this chapter, you can see that uh, I have been a permanent court expert uh, for the field of forensic uh, medicine for many years. And also uh, my basic profession is forensic pathology or forensic medicine. And uh, I uh, was lucky to spend two years in Sweden, in Lund. It was between uh, 1995 and 1997. Uh, is it uh, enough slowly? Can you translate? Or should it be slower or not? So I, I think that it is okay. Okay, thank you. So uh, I had opportunity to uh, get certificate of my uh, medical diploma and uh, I became a specialist in forensic medicine in Sweden and I still am the part of this forensic network in, in Sweden. Uh, I started to work at the Institute of Forensic Medicine, School of Medicine University in Belgrade. It was on September 1st, 1983, and uh, almost four decades I spent at the Institute. So I've been retired on 1st of October last year. So I am retired man for almost, or more than three months. So it was my basic for profession and uh, I uh, must say that uh, my great pleasure was to be uh, head of teaching staff in English language at our faculty for 20 years. And also I was a lecturer 
in legal medicine at the Faculty of Law from 2008 till retiring. And uh, uh, many other... Aha, da, očeš da, dobro da, ja sam mislio da vas ne, evo, okej. When I start with presentation, I will turn off the camera in order to be concentrated on the slides. And for over a decade, I was a member and the president of the Republic of Serbia Government Ethics Committee. So shortly said, it is something which I'm, uh, I can say about myself. So let me see. So, so the content of our discussion today is presented here, and I think that it's not bad to read it. The first topic is significance and general characteristic of criminal offenses against sexual freedom especially devoted to sexual violence against children. And a part of this discussion will be about criminal offenses against sexual freedom in the Republic of Serbia criminal code because legal attitude is roughly different in different countries. So I can say a few words about legislation in Serbia. And this is the first part, so-called introduction, because many, many facts are well known to you because you are the member of this important network against uh, sexual abuse. And the other part is uh, devoted to medical, legal, and forensic problems. We shall start with proving of criminal offenses against sexual freedom in investigation and criminal procedure. The most important, of course, is physical examination of victims with uh, discussion about extra genital and genital injuries. Also a very important part is physical examination of offenders if they are arrested, of course. Uh, significant significance of detection identification and forensic analysis of biological traces, which are in such cases sometimes of essential importance, significance of chemical toxicology analysis, and my uh, presentation will be filled with the uh, case reports from expertise practice. And of course, finally, question and answers, but I have an arrangement with Ilya that maybe it is better to put the questions immediately. Možda da se pitanja postavljaju odmah tokom moje prezentacije, ne ostavljati pitanja za kraj prezentacije, kada je publika obično već i umorna, tako da nije problem meni da me prekidate i pokušat ću da odgovorim. I didn't put the numbers of references in all slides, but basically... Uh, my presentation is based on this, these six references. Uh, statistical data uh, are taken from uh, these two references about rape statistics by country from 2023 and uh, UNICEF uh, data about sexual violence against children and all other references are connected with forensic pathology. We have two textbooks from our faculty, one in English, number three, and one in Serbian, number four, and two very important <clears throat> medical legal uh, references. The first is uh, clinical forensic medicine with the part about sexual assault examination, and the second, or number six, uh, pediatric forensic medicine and pathology with the chapter investigation of suspected sexual abuse. And of course, uh, the very important part of my discussion is by, uh, based on my experience, which uh, has been lasting for four decades. Uh, it is well known that sexual violence knows no boundaries and that it is present in 
all historical periods and in all countries in the world, in every social class, but with different fre frequency. And uh, there is a picture that uh, I took from this rate statistic by country. You can see that uh, suicide, or uh, no, suicide, sorry, uh, rates of rape in different countries are very variable, but we shall say a few words that accuracy of these statistical data are in many cases a matter of dispute. Uh, a significant majority of victims of rape are of course women, but men and children of both sexes may also be victims of sexual violence, but their percentage is, is uh, minor, we can say, especially when males are in question. On the other hand, the most frequent perpetrators of sexual violence are men, and uh, there is usual prejudice that uh, rapists are some unknown people, uh, serial rapists uh, who are going through the st street, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it can happen sometimes. But it's most uh, very. Ali, veoma važno reći publici da oko 50 u oko 50 posto slučajeva žrtva i izvršilac ili barem jedan od izvršilaca ukoliko ih je više od jednu, su se prethodno poznavali i tačno je da ovaj procenat je čak veći u slučajevima seksualnog zlostavljanja dece, jer decu obično zlostavlja neko ko je blizak njima ili član porodice ili neko osoba iz susedstva i sl. Samo trenutak, imam problem sa menjanjem slajdova. Izvinite. Već sam pomenuo da tačni statistički pokazatelji o učestvalosti seksualnog nasilja, silovanja, su teško doći do njih. Zapravo i mnogim zemljama nasilje se ne prijavljuje u realnim brojevima. Dakle, brojevi slučajeva su podcenjeni i u suštini možemo da kažemo da otkriveni i dokazani slučajevi predstavljaju samo vrh ledenog brega. Sve što se nalazi ispod površine vode je sakriveno i to je veći deo problema koji se nalazi ispod vode u skoro svim zemljama širom sveta, Ova krivična dela podležu obaveznom prijavljivanju, ali up... A large number of cases of sexual violence remain unreported. Why? And I think that you probably know this fact that the victim in many cases does not report it. Why? Explanation is not easy to be found, but some reasons may be the following. Of course, embarrassment and victim shame, shaming, it is very important consequence of this rape attack. Fear of reprisal from the rapist also, especially if they knew it, uh, know each other, and even fear of how the victim's own family and friends and neighborhood will react on this fact. Also, we have to confess that many countries' laws against sexual assault are insufficient, inconsistent, or not regularly enforced. And this can, in many situations, leave the victim convinced that getting law enforcement involved will do no good. And in some cases, could actually make things worse instead of better. What does it mean? Uh, as a rule, these court procedures are very long, long-lasting, boring, tiresome for the victim. And of course, each contact with the court, with police, with uh, prosecutors, uh, make secondary victimization to the, to the victim or to the female or to the woman. And it is very important and of course important to escape if it is possible. So because of 
the previously said, it is estimated that approximately 35% of women worldwide have experienced sexual harassment in their lifetime or in more than one third of countries, at least 5% of young women reported experiences of sexual violence in childhood. Really, really very, very warning data. And once again, uh, rape rate by country presented uh, its number of rape cases uh, per 100,000 uh, people or uh, people in one year. And we can see that these rates are very variable, but once again, their accuracy is problematic in many countries and in many situations. However, in most countries with data available on rape, including the US, so it is said so, fewer than 40% of those women seek help and fewer than 10% seek assistance from law enforcement. In Serbia, it is said that of all reported cases of sexual violence in approximately 10 to 30% and indictment and court proceedings are brought against the perpetrator. So minimal part of cases are prosecuted and of course analyzed in the court on one, uh, on the one side and on the other side, proving is not easy. You will see that the pro proving in the court and all of you who are familiar with this problem and uh, we shall pre practically deal with this problem, know that this proving is very, very problematic and hardworking. So bearing in mind that not all cases of sexual violence are reported, and that is difficult to prove them in court proceedings, it follows that a significant number of perpetrators of these acts never receive the appropriate and deserved legal punishment. Really problematic. And it is said, again, in the US, for instance, it is estimated that only 9% of rapists are prosecuted and only 3% of them spend time in prison. Opposite is said, 97% of rapists walk free. Really warning, and uh, all of us have to do something uh, to change this uh, very, very warning and astonishing number. Uh, this, is, this is one uh, chapter for newspaper in, in Serbia. You can see that uh, title is that it is a photo of the rapist in front of the elevator. It was case of unknown rapist uh, who was active in one part of Belgrade. And it is said that he sexually abused a 45-year-old uh, woman for more than an hour. After that, he ran away when one of the tenants heard the noise. And the problem is how to find him and how to prevent him to continue with his rape activities. Regarding sexual violence against children, we can say that it is, of course, one of the most unsettling of children's rights violations. And because of that, it is the subject of dedicated international legal instruments aimed at protecting children against its multiple forms. Uh, and uh, I can say that uh, in almost all countries all over the world, including Serbia, the children represent a specially vulnerable and sensible and specially protecting, uh, protected uh, group uh, in the in the law. Acts of sexual violence, which often occur together and with other forms of violence, and we can mention that these are physical or bodily injuring. The second is emotional or psychical abuse. And finally, it could be neglect, which is especially characteristic for 
kids, for children, not for older persons. And this sexual violence can range from direct physical contact to unwant unwanted exposure to sexual language and images. So many, many different forms of this sexual abuse may exist. And uh, for all these types, the sexual violence is often used as an umbrella term to cover all different types of sexual victimization. Of course, children of every age may be victims of sexual abuse. And again, girls are particularly vulnerable, but in uh, children population, boys are also vulnerable to sexual abuse. It is said that every year, millions of girls and boys around the world face sexual abuse and exploitation. At least 120 million girls under the age of 20, so it is said about one in 10, have been forced to engage in sex or perform other sexual acts, although the actual figure is likely much higher. Again, many cases remain uncovered, undisclosed, and again, the proved cases represent the tip of the iceberg. Children may be subjected to sexual abuse or exploitation at home, at school or in their community, and the very modern form of sexual abuse uh, is based on the widespread, widespread use of digital technologies, with, uh, which can also put children at risk. And of course, we have no enough time to discuss about this. And as I'm forensic pathologist, the most important part will be uh, uh, the problem of direct sexual contact with the perpetrator to body of the kid. Again, many victims of sexual violence, including millions of boys, never tell anyone. It is the problem how to strengthen the uh, kid, the child, to say and to confess uh, or to say uh, to some uh, family member that uh, it has been exposed to sexual abuse. Most often, once again, abuse occurs at the hands of someone a child knows and trusts, family member mostly, and in some situation, even very close family member, like father or grandfather. And you will see at the end of my presentation, one court case uh, with the problem that the grandfather was accused for the uh, rape uh, of his granddaughter, and uh, it is still still actual case. It is not finished. Uh, I will represent pre uh, it uh, after this theoretical part of the presentation. It is said that almost 90% of adolescent girls who reported for sex say that their first perpetrator was someone they knew usually a boyfriend or a husband. So the next part will be a few words about the crimes connected with sexual abuse in criminal code of Republic of Serbia. There are many of them, but the most important are three which are on the top of the list. Rape, copulation with a helpless person and copulation with a child. So we shall mostly discuss about these three crimes, and I will only mention other, sexual intercourse through abuse of position, prohibited sexual acts, sexual harassment, procurement of sexual services, mediation in prostitution, and three which are much longer, but they are modern, they are inter interesting, especially these two last, and you can say that uh, they are inserted relatively recently and they have no uh, uh, separate number, but they are appendix to article 185. We have exhibition, procurement and possession of pornographic materials and exploit, uh, exploiting 
uh, of juveniles for pornography, incitement of minors to attend sexual acts, and finally, abuse of computer networks or other technical communication means for committing criminal offenses against sexual freedom of juveniles. Again, a few words about uh, things which are well known, but uh, we have mentioned it, that sexual act may be either voluntary or violent. Voluntary sexual act of the different types is performed with the conscious and deliberate consent of both partners, of course, excluding children. We shall explain why, because even conscious and deliberate act with child, and child, you will see it's mean a legally uh, a person under the age of 14 is a criminal act. Violent is performs performed against the will of one of the partners. And an important feature of these acts is that sexual contacts are made without the victim's consent, either with or without her active opposition and resistance. But there is no willing act for one side. So therefore, rape as a crime represent an unlawful act that involves sexual intercourse carried out forcibly or under threat of injury against a person's will. What does it mean unlawful? It means without valid consent for sexual intercourse, either because the person did not give any consent at all, or because her consent was invalid, why she was too young, or her mental state was deficient for giving a conscience and a conscious consent. Uh, I will present you the text of our criminal code regarding rape. It is said like this, whoever by using a force or a threat of direct attack against or the body of another forces that person to copulation or an equivalent act shall be punished with imprisonment of from three to 12 years. So this really big range on a large age between punishments between three and 12 years is many, uh, for me was uh, not clear. And I tried to uh, make a discussion with my, my law st students in which way such big range could be. And I think that directly this big range may be the, the problem in uh, making uh, appropriate pun punishment on the sentence in the cor court. And uh, uh, no one gave me a reasonable, reasonable explanation. But of course, our duty is not to discuss and to change criminal code, but of course, our duty is to say our opinion if we think that it is not good. So according to the current criminal code of the Republic of Serbia, I said current or actual, both the victim and the perpetrator of rape can be female or male. In earlier versions, the victim, the victim was exclusively a woman and the perpetrator was a man. And in the oldest version, uh, there was no rape in a marriage. What does it mean? The spouse could not be raped by her husband. So it should have been a woman, but who is not married to the perpetrator. So it was very patriarchal, of course, but uh, it is changed. And today the situa uh, situation is like presented, but despite of this change in our criminal code, it is an indisputable fact that in the vast majority of rape cases, the victim is a woman and the perpetrator or is a man. So it is something which is not a matter of dispute. 
What does it mean copulation? Of course, we know that it is insertion of the penis into the vagina and it could be complete or not complete. And in these cases, ejaculation of semen is not relevant and it is not essential part of the rape act. What does it mean? Acts which are equivalent to copulation. The description and definition in the legal uh, matter is like this. All actions by which the perpetrator satisfies his sexual, sexual urge on the body of another person in a manner similar to sexual intercourse, what is included penetration of the penis into the mouth or anus, penetration into the mouth or anus with other parts of the body, like thumb, finger, or fingers, penetration into these body, op uh, body openings with an object, and finally, contact of the perpetrator's mouth with the victim's genitals. And... Uh, now we have to, to explain what does it mean, coercion. Coercion on sexual act, act uh, uh, might be applied by use of force or threat. Use of force is various ways, like slapping, hitting, squeezing, knocking down, trapping, etc., etc. And it's often discussed about the situation that the victim uh, is partly guilty for this uh, uh, act of rape uh, because of her so-called lascivious and challenging behavior. For example, if one girl decides to go to the flat of a man, it is automatically said, okay, her plan was to have sex with him. It is really very stupid and the usual question, even in the court, what will be what she was looking for in his apartment. Of course, the girl can go and can decide to go, but it is not automatically a sign that she is ready to be the part of sexual act and, of course, not to be raped. And uh, you can see this question is very important. What part? of no, don't you understand? When she says no, it must be admitted as no. And regarding this, maybe you had the opportunity to uh, see this movie. It is called Accused, very, very good movie as an illustration of the problem of the rape. In reality, and especially in the court, uh, the main role is Jodie Foster. She uh, was raped by uh, uh, several people in the bar, but the problem is that her behavior in the beginning was so-called inviting, lascivious. She was under influence of alcohol, it was obvious. But in a moment that when the group of these uh, males started to attack and to try to have sexual intercourse, she said no. And she repeated no, 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 but it was in vain. They started with physical coercion and finally she was raped. And uh, you will also see uh, how problematic is uh, the role of victim in the court. What does it mean secondary victimization? Her lawyer was Kelly McGillis and uh, of course, there is a happy end, but if you had no opportunity to see these mo uh, movies, I can recommend you, and I don't want you to disclose the details of these movies. It is very interesting and very, very educative. Uh, use of force means disabling the victim. The victim, it might be either physical, or psychological. Physical means by tying, holding, by blows to the head that cause unconsciousness of the victim. And what does it mean psychological? It is administration of so-called psychoactive substances like alcohol, drugs, and medicines. Uh, they uh, 
can influence the conscious state and of course uh, the uh, consciousness of the persons and uh, this type of rape is called in the literature, literature drug facilitated sexual assault and even in our criminal code it is accepted as a uh, 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 use of force so it is said force shall also mean use of hypnosis or means of intoxication with the objective to bring some, someone against his will into a state of unconsciousness or make powerless to resist. One newspaper's uh, information, uh, it is said, he drugged and then raped an immobile girl. And the explanation was that emotionless woman, she was 31 year old, was raped by a man who was aged about 50 years. And it is said that, that the rapist previously put the girl and her mother and her stepfather to sleep with a narcotic that he poured into orange juice. So idea is why toxicological analysis is very important in these cases. What does it mean use of threat? It is obvious and imminent danger that the abuse opposes to the life and body of the victim or a person close to her. And if it is woman and it is in majority of cases in question, the children is on uh, her children or her child is usually uh, this person who is under the threat. What is the aim of the threat? That the aim is to frighten the victim so that she does not resist. And if there is no resisting of the victim, logical conclusion is that without resist, no injury will be present on the body of the victim. Therefore, very important, which is in, I say, uh, contrast with main, uh, uh, with many, many opinions uh, in public, in media, that the absence of injuries on the body of the victim and also of the perpetrators and the att attacker does not rule out rape. And I can say that these cases are the most difficult for proving in the court procedure. Why? Because assessment of the existence and the character of the danger is within the jurisdiction of the court. Me as a forensic pathologist can say only that injuries were not found, but of course, such conclusion and such opinion does not rule out the possibility of rape. In this case, or in such cases, psychiatric examination of the victim is very important. And of course, circumstances of the case, especially finding some weapon like a knife. Look at this picture. It is usual situation that nose and mouth are covered while because or in order to prevent the screaming and the crying for help and the knife is put on the neck. I will kill you immediately. You have or you must have sexual intercourse with me. And this uh, attempt of the perpetrator usually stops all efforts of the victim to defend herself. And uh, this uh, name of Sasha Meg, I put with the name because it is published in newspapers, so it is not matter or it is not necessary to, to cover and to hide this name because these pictures and name, uh, his name were in newspapers and uh, well known in media. Uh, in December 2009, it is said that this Sasha Mega, uh, when he was 30, was arrested on suspicion on intercepting girls and forcing them to have sex by threatening them with a knife. What was important in this case, that a knife was found with him. So very important evidence in the court procedure. In the third paragraph, of this article. Uh, yeah, yes. 
Slobodan. May I intervene? Slobodan. I think that Janeta was not here when we said that you could ask questions already. So there's a question in the chat box for you. also recognize the victim isn't able to make yes yes it is recognized but it is the next type of crime so it is not rape it is in rape it is situation the that perpetrator put the victim in such state and if this state already exists it will be the different type uh, of crime and it will be explained in, in further present, uh, part of presentation. Who can... Uh -huh. May I intervene? Yep. <laughs> Pretpostavljam da ovo što je Janeta komentirala, tonična imobilnost je zapravo ona primarna reakcija na stres koja je potpuno nesvjesna i koja nastupa u roku od nekoliko milisekundi. Dakle, ona klasična fight, fight, freeze, pa taj freeze koji se onda ima svoje unutarnje podjele, uključujući na tonišnu imobilnost. Zapravo, mozak procijenjuje, kao reakcija na traumatsko iskustvo, mozak procijenjuje da ništa drugo neće funkcionirati. Ja mislim da o toj vrsti tonične imobilnosti ona govori, a ne o tonične imobilnosti u koju je doveo počinitelj. To, naravno, ne da mogu, nego moram da prihvatim jer to nije deo moje priče, znači to je nešto što zato i kažemo da je psihijatrijski pregled, odnosno pregled od strane forenzičkog psihijatra i psihologa jako značaja. Da, ja mislim da je to dio na koji ste ona referirala, to je vrlo često iskustvo jer se pokazuje da je ta tonična imobilnost vrlo često reakcija na seksualno nasilje i silovanje i to je taj sastavni dio kompletne fiziološke reakcije na traumatsko iskustvo koje je potpuno izve naše voljne kontrole. I onda gdje se povezuje upravo i s tim utjecajem posttraumatskog stresnog poremećaja nakon preživljenog iskustva jer se pojačava osjećaj optuživanja i samo krivnje, a nisam uspjela ni vikat, nisam probala bježati. I je važno upravo to objašnjenje da to nije bilo nešto što je bio njen voljni izbor jer u tom momentu predfrontalni korteks još ništa, nula. Nije još ni došlo do njega sve na razini amigdala. Potpuno prihvatam, ali sa sudsko-medicinskog aspekta to će opet biti slučajevi bez povreda. Je li tako? Znači, seksualni akt će biti izvršen, bit će ta reakcija žrtve koja će praktično sprečiti da pruža otpor i to možemo svrstati u one slučajeve koji su najproblematičniji, a to je kako dokazati kada povreda nema. Naravno, neću detalje sati o psihijatrijskom delu priče, ali svakako moramo priznati da kad nema povreda i vidjet ćete u svim slučajevima kada objektivni dokazi ili su minimalni ili ne postoje, mi moramo prihvatiti da sudu neće biti lako da donese odluku i o tome ću posvetiti veći deo priče u daljem toku. Možemo li dalje? So uh, we should continue with this third paragraph of article uh, devoted to the rape, and it covers so-called serious or qualified forms of criminal offense of rape where the uh, legal sentence or punishment is, of course, even severe, more severe. In situation, if grievous bodily harm occurs to the person against whom the offense was committed, committed, if more than one person were included as a perpetrators, if the rape was committed on particularly cruel or humiliating manner, if it is applied to juvenile person, and of course, in case of pregnancy as a consequence of the rape, the legal sentence and punishment will be higher and uh, imprisonment in these cases will be from 5 to 15 years. Again, I think very large range between 5 and 15. So my opinion is in such difficult cases, the court must uh, find a good reasons to make decision to give only five years of imprisonment, but again, it's uh, 
uh, judiciary problem, not, not ours. So once again, which are cases of so-called qualified or serious forms of the rape, serious bodily injury, several persons, particularly cruel or particularly humiliating man manner of raping against a minor, minor. Again, minor is a person who has reached the age of 14, but has not reached the age of 18. We shall explain some terms according to our criminal code, what is a child, what is a minor, and what is a minor person. And of course, if pregnancy of the victim occurs, again, uh, imprisonment is between five and five, 15 years. Again, we shall come, uh, uh, come back, or we shall uh, go back to this case, which was already presented about this guy who sexually abused for more than an hour victim, and it is especially serious and, and uh, hard rape. And finally, he was arrested. So when he was arrested, this serial rapist got a sentence of 20 years of imprisonment. And the explanation was like that. It is said that serial rapist was sentenced to 20 years in prison, but it was not only one crime, sentenced for one rape in a humiliating manner, two attempted rapes and one theft. In this situation, usually so-called cumulative uh, sentence will be uh, given for more than one crime. So, just a second. So, but I will present you which is attitude of our jurisdiction, really some, sometimes very problematic and very disputable. Again, about this Sasha Mega, we have already mentioned that he, uh, he was arrested on suspicion of intercepting girls and forcing them to have sex by use of knife. The knife was found with him, but in this case, it was a multiple returnee in the commission of this criminal act. Look at his, his history. The first rape, he was committed in 1996 when he was 17. Three years after that, he repeated the same crime and in 2004, he was sentenced to only, I must say, only four years in prison for rape in a brutal and humiliating manner. So we have two rapes previous and one, this special, especially hard crime, and the sentence was only four years. How to explain this? Uh, we have to mention that previously, the sentence for rape was from for these uh, difficult uh, forms uh, from three to 15 years in prison. And look at this, three cases, repeated rapes, and instead of the maximum of the punishment, he got on uh, almost minimum, only four years, and the minimum was three years. Once again, I think that very disputable attitude of the judiciary and inappropriate small sentences which are mentioned in the criminal court and which are given to the perpetrator in the court procedures. Excuse me, I have some problems with my computer with going on of slides, so. Uh, Regarding this Sasha Mega case and these cases of uh, rapists, which are ret uh, return returnees, uh, some ideas appeared about the chemical castration of returning rapists, but uh, I have already mentioned that the legal attitude to the rape cases are different in different uh, uh, 
countries look at this it is very it is a really horrible picture but it is uh, in yemen execution of the rapist by saber so it has solved the problem in different manner of course we know that this uh, life punishment uh, does not exist in our criminal code and the most uh, difficult cases are in situation when death of the person who was raped occurs and if this rape was performed against the children uh, against the child in these cases is imprisonment of minimum 10 years and the maximum is life imprisonment uh, maybe you do not know that in 2019 this life imprisonment was uh, restated in our criminal code because uh, previously the maximum punishment was from 30 to 40 years in prison but in 2019 this life imprisonment uh, came back in our criminal code of course uh, or life uh, punishment or execution was not introduced and uh, i will present you one case from india it was very interesting that uh, uh, that was a famous case of brutal gang rape of a 30 year old woman she was attacked along with her husband on a bus in new delhi it was in december 16 she was brutally raped and finally died due to the sustained injuries a few days later. Authorities say that they will seek the death penalty and the sixth attacker is under the age of 18 and will be tried in juvenile court. And uh, this case uh, started uh, many protests across India. Protesters demanded tougher rape laws and police reform uh, uh, on one side and on the other side a change in attitude towards women in society. So uh, I finish with this uh, theoretical part and uh, the second part is, I think the most important in uh, my presentation. So we shall start with the importance of a medical examination to prove the qualified form. If we have a problem of serious bodily injury, uh, medical doctors, especially forensic pathologists, make so-called qualification. You will see that the uh, uh, bodily injury could be slight, could be serious, and finally fatal. So, particularly cruel or humiliating manner may be uh, disclosed on the base of char character of, or features of injuries and, of course, sick circumstances. Uh, if a uh, rape was against a minor or a child, it is very important to estimate the victim's age. Of course, if the uh, victim is already identified, it's not a problem. But uh, today, uh, we have a problem with uh, persons, uh, mostly females uh, from abroad, who are victims of human trafficking and also they are usually uh, victims of sexual abuse in these cases uh, the persons are not identified uh, there is a language barrier to make a contact with him also they are without documents without passports so in the court procedure from medical doctor is uh, requested to make estimation of their age the most important whether this age is below or over 15 years and in cases of pregnancy of course determ determination of pregnancy and in the most difficult cases if fatal outcome occurs forensic autopsy is obligatory we know that sexual violence results in severe physical psychological psychological and social harm and i will not repeat this i think that uh, you know uh, these facts uh, much better than me that uh, many many different and difficult cons consequences are on, on uh, psychical state and uh, behavior of the person 
can occur uh, uh, with, for example, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and even suicidal tendencies. And regarding uh, pregnancy in the victim of rape, uh, in uh, women who are victims of rape, there is a risk of unwanted pregnancy. Of course, in such situation when uh, the female or when the woman is in reproductive period, and if uh, during regular monthly cycles, this attack occurred around half of the cycle with genital contact and ejaculation. So if copulation with ejaculation occurred, it's very important to immediately apply postcoital contraception and of course to perform pregnancy tests and monitoring in the next days. Also, in many cases, rape is combined with other crimes, especially sustaining and inflicting of physical injuries if the force was applied. And also murder can occur from the legal point of view. It can be so-called ordinary or simple or qualified. For example, committed in especially and highly humiliating manner, which are common ways of uh, killing the person who is in the same time the victim of the rape. It is smothering. Smothering represents pressure of the hand on the nose and mouth and throttling. It is squeezing of the neck with a hand or hands. This is a case from uh, 1994. Uh, it was a case of uh, killed saleswoman. She was 41. Killer was unknown and it was combined asphyxiation. The cause of death was smothering and throttling, but the semen was found in vagina and on thigh skin. So it was rape combined with a final murder. Uh, the second uh, crime is, we have finished with uh, rape, is a copulation with a uh, person taking advantage of mental illness, mental retardation, or other mental disorder and incapac incapacity or some other state, which makes this person to be incapable of resistance. So uh, the person is not possible to give uh, or to uh, resist herself. And this state is... Uh, uh, used by perpetrator, you can see that imprisonment uh, in such cases lasts from 5 to 12 years. What can be in uh, question? Mental illness, retarded mental development, and other mental disorder, so including temporary mental disorders caused by influence of alcohol and drugs. I uh, present the two pictures for partying. And during this parting, the persons, usually females, are usually under influence of alcohol and drugs. And if some perpetrator put the girl into state of uh, 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 under the, the, the influence of psychoactive substance, for example, pouring something into her uh, liquor in, uh, in, in her drink, it will be the rape, but if the person is already under influence of alcohol or drugs, and it is obvious, and if perpetrator use this state, it will be this case or this uh, crime from Article 179. So, what is the duty of medical legal expertise in such cases? So. For the first, it will determine that rape or an act equivalent to it occurred, mostly copulation. So objective determination of the mental and or physical weakness of the victim, also psychiatric and physical examination. And the most important for this type of crime, whether the perpetrator could or had to notice that the person was in state in which sexual contact with him was prohibited. And finally, the most severe uh, form of rape or sexual abuse is copulation with a child. 
It is said whoever copulates with a child or commits an equivalent act against the child shall be punished with imprisonment from five to 12 years. So the more severe form again with grievous bodily harm, several persons pregnancy, and if death of a raped child occurred, imprisonment is minimum of 10 years and the uh, maximum is life imprisonment. Again, in our uh, criminal code, a child is a person who has not reached the age of 14, a minor, maloletnic, is a person who has reached the age of 14, but not reached the age of 18, and a minor person in Serbian maloletnolice, it is a person under the age of 18. So, once again... Admila, da kaže slobodno da uspori malo ili... A, dobro. Sve u redu, dobro, samo proveravam u redu. Ok, hvala. So, copulation with a child, even without the use of force, is a crime. Why? Due to physical underdevelopment, children are unable to resist, and due to mental immaturity, they are unaware of their actions. Therefore, the rule, legal rule is any sexual act with a child, so person younger than 14, voluntary or forced is a criminal offense. Also, it is very important to emphasize that in small children whose growth and full anatomical formation of the sexual organs have not yet been completed, attempts to fully penetrate the vagina or anus, but uh, anus, but vagina, vagina mostly, with the penis, even when the attacker did not apply the force, most often lead to visible and significant injuries due to the disproportion in size between the penis of the attacker and the body openings of the child. And such injuries are diagnostically very, very important and persuasive. And in precautious girls who look older, and today it is not a rare situation, the usual question during the court procedure again is whether the defendant could have known her age. And one of the most famous cases were cases of uh, Roman Polanski, when he was 60, uh, 76 year old, he was arrested, uh, it was in 2009, on the basis of an American warrant. Uh, he was arrested in Zurich at a film festival where he was supposed to receive a Lifetime Achievement Award. Instead of that, the, his, uh, his uh, uh, sending to USA was wanted. And uh, what was the problem? Polanski was tried in the US in 1978 for having sex with a 13 year old girl, but fled before the verdict. The US is demanding that Polanski be extradited for a crime that carries a maximum sentence of two years in prison under US law and differences in uh, legal attitude, uh, which are present with our verdict in uh, the criminal court of Serbia, it could be up to 12 years. So we shall start with this problem of proving criminal offenses against sexual freedom in court proceedings, how to prove sexual assault. There are three different steps or three parts of this procedure of investigation. First, circumstances of the case must be uh, analyzed and on the basis of investigative actions, it is examination of the site of the event, uh, data uh, obtained from the victim, eventually from the witnesses, but uh, in, in uh, majority of cases, uh, rape and other sexual abuse acts are uh, unwitnessed. 
examination of the victim, very important, and of course, identification and examination of the perpetrator or perpetrators. Which are tax or clinical forensic examination in cases of victims of crimes against sexual freedom? Clinical forensic medicine is something which is maybe uh, not familiar to you because uh, forensic pathology or forensic medicine is well known and it is usually connected with the death, with uh, uh, corpses, with uh, medical legal autopsies. But uh, in such cases of rape, if uh, outcome is not fatal, this clinical forensic medicine is very important. What does it mean? Clinical forensic medicine represent examination of the victim of some crime, but not in order to make diagnosis and treat and heal the patient, but to collect evidences about injury in a proper way in order to get the best evidence for the court procedure. Which are tasks of this medical legal, forensic medical legal investigation? Number one, it is determination and documentation of physical or bodily injury, their description, making photos, classification and qualification. I will explain immediately. Classification is estimating of the type of injury. For example, if it is mechanical injury or some other asphyctical, physical, Mechanical injuries might be, for example, bruise, abrasion, uh, different type of wounds, and you will see asphyctical injuries we have already mentioned, smothering, throttling. It could even be a different part of uh, different types of injuries, but in cases of rape, mostly mechanical and asphyctical injuries will occur. What does it mean? Qualification, it is estimation of severity of injury, whether the injury was slight, serious, or grave, and in the most difficult cases, if in injury could be fatal or injuries. Number two is determination of a copulation or an act equal to it. How to prove whether copulation or similar act really occurred. Number three, provision of material for traceological and analysis, biology, biological traces, provision of samples for toxicological analysis, we have already mentioned, psychoactive substances, and finally provision of screening materials for blood and sexually transmitted infections, and determination of, of psychological tra trauma. These six parts are very important and we shall explain each of them separately. Physical examination and examination findings and indications of rape are very variable in different cases and they depend on the following factors. For the first age of the victim, it is not the same if we have a child or mature person. The time interval since the attack, very, very important. If previous sexual intercourse occurred at any time, previous pregnancies, miscarriages and births, first aid done to the victim, vaginal douching, bathing and changes of clothing. It is very important to take care about these factors. And uh, what is advice for medical doctor? Medical doctor who is contact with the rape of victim, for example, the victim report this rape to the police. Not only medical doctors, but all persons who are in first contact with the rape victim has to give two very important advices to the victim. First, do not bath after the act of rape. Why? Because the usual reaction of the victim is to take a bath and to wash off all traces of this embarrassing rape from her body. 
And the second is to remove clothing and to uh, not to see this clothing uh, which uh, was on her during this rape act. So the ad advice is do not change clothes or if the victim changed clothes to collect this uh, cloth, not to uh, throw it away. Very important in such cases is rule. The examination should be done as soon as possible. I will explain the difference with uh, the attitude between physical injury and sexual abuse. In cases if body injury is only a question without sexual act, from the medical legal point of view, the examination is not very urgent. Examination might be urgent in order to make a diagnosis and to treat and heal eventually serious injuries. But from medical legal point of view, it is not necessary to arrange uh, this uh, examination immediately. Why? The explanation is that many injuries, especially bruises, hematoma, will not appear immediately after the inflicting of injury. In many cases, it is necessary 24 hours to pass to uh, for uh, make all bruises to be obvious and uh, uh, visible by naked eyes. I don't. Uh, uh, I, I hope it is understandable. So in these cases, it is even better to delay examination, medical legal examination for next day or. If examination is made immediately, it should be done again after 24 hours because the findings on the body of the victim immediately after injuring and after 24 hours may be completely difficult. But if sexual abuse and rape and other sexual uh, abuse acts are in question, once again, the examination should be done as soon as possible. There are two important reasons. The first reason is to preserve biological traces because any delay of examination will produce disappearing of very important biological traces. The second reason, injuries uh, that the injuries would not disappear, especially injuries on the genital organs. They are usually slight and quickly pass without the traces like bruises, abrasions and contusions of the skin and mucous membranes. And again, especially on genital organs, these injuries are usually slight and they very soon disappear without permanent traces. Because of that, the time interval elapsed from the committed sexual violence to the examination of the victim is critical for the findings, especially in relation to injuries of gen genital organs. And it is said, if the examination is not performed within first 72 hours, the probability that the genital injuries will be documented is significantly reduced because injuries on the mucous membranes of the genital organs heal very quickly. And again, biological traces may disappear. Ilo, I see four questions. Can we stop and interrupt to see which, which questions were put? Okay, Lilia Stevkovic Kazi in Serbia. We also have Zakon o maloletnim učiniocima krivičnih dela i krivičnoj zaštiti maloletnih lica, of course, but in uh, our, in our uh, presentation is the age of victim is important. I agree with this. If we have, let me see. Is it only okay? Thank you, man. This uh, the perpetrator was a mar, then that is why the punishment was not that harsh. I don't know about Serbia, but in Croatia we have Zakon Sudovima za Mladež. Okay, Lilia Stevkovic, she gave an answer on it. But the perpetrators are not so important part of our discussion. Okay, 
we can go on just to close it. So look at this, it was, uh, I was a medical expert in this case and a court order for an expertise of the victim's injuries, but look at this, seven years after the alleged rape. What can I say? Of course, nothing if medical evidence are well, uh, or were not uh, completed in that time. And in these cases, it's very important to say that primary clinical forensic assessment of complainants, mainly uh, a victim, and suspects of sexual assault, assault should only be conducted by doctors and nurses who have acquired specialist knowledge, skills, and attitudes during the theoretical and practical training. So not all doctors are appropriate doctor, a special education and training is essential, but I don't think so that it exists in Serbia at all. Uh, I will present you a uh, part of results of uh, PhD th thesis of uh, my colleague, uh, George Alimpievich. He, uh, he is a chief of our institute nowadays. Uh, his thesis uh, with title contemporary Forensic expertise in criminal offenses of sexual crimi uh, criminality uh, represented a research of a research of 113 cases proce uh, processed in the district court in Belgrade, and uh, he made analysis of court files, evidentiary proceedings, and verdicts. So. The main conclusion was that the poor quality of medical documentation, uh, medical document, uh, documentation was found in many cases because the examination was mostly performed by untrained doctors. The second mistake, only a gynecological examination was performed without a general physical examination of the whole body and it caused failures in determining very important extragenital injuries. And look at this, very problematic, the very low frequency of engagement of uh, forensic pathologists. Look at this, in only nine of more than 100 cases, forensic pathologists were involved. And such bad medical procedure caused impossibility of proving the crime of rape. Again, conclusion, perpetrators are to some extent protected with bad medical procedure improving sexual violence because it's problematic for the court to make a statement without evidence. Uh, we had a world championship, uh, championship in football and one of the main persons was Cristiano Ronaldo. I don't know if you're interested in football, but uh, regarding Cristiano Ronaldo, very interesting uh, information when he was a, a football player in Manchester United in the United Kingdom, uh, he was accused of rape. And finally, he has been acquitted of raping two girls due to lack of evidence according to the BBC report. So it was not proved that he was innocent, but he was released because evidence were not collected. And it is one of the possibility in all criminal courts in Serbia, the person finally may be proclaimed as innocent, may be proclaimed as guilty, but may be released on the base of lack of evidence. Of course, Examination must start with uh, giving the consent to the examination by the victim. Uh, it is so-called infirmed consent. Uh, the aim and the procedure of examination must be explained to the victim. And of course, uh, it's necessary to say that in any moment, she can uh, stop this examination. Of course, uh, consent is obtained from the woman from the victim or in the case of a child from parent or guardian. Who should do the examination in the normal medical procedure? Of course, educated team and the best combination is of three different persons. 
firstly, a specialist in forensic medicine, but the problem is that in Serbia, uh, there are no so many specialists in forensic medicine, I think approximately 50 to 60, and the number of rape cases is, is much larger. So it is impo impossible to arrange uh, that uh, in all cases of rape, uh, forensic pathologists will be included because of that another doctor qualified to adequately perform an external physical examination may be included and from 2009 in the course of forensic medicine uh, at the school of medicine in belgrade the essential part for the students uh, uh, during their medical of uh, course in forensic medicine is education in clinical forensic medicine and they have uh, they, the, they get a basic knowledge and explanation in which way this clinical medical legal examination can be performed. The second is gynecologist, of course, uh, because of gynecological, gynecological examination. And finally, psychiatrist or psychologist or in combination in order to prove psychological consequences in estimation of threat. And of course, very important is psychological help and support for the victim. It is the best to do it in one place in order to reduce examination time and repeating of uh, uh, examination, and especially in order to avoid additional harassment of the victim. Once again, avoiding of secondary victimization, which is usually uh, committed or performed by unnecessary repetition of statements. Uh, details of the allegation of circumstances my, must be obtained from the uh, victim. So if the victim has already provided the details of the allegation to another professional, for example, police, it is not necessary to repeat the, these details to the, fish, uh, the physician because these details of the allegation can be provided to the physician by this other person like a policeman and after that clarified in a conversation with the victim and also it's very important to say and to point out it may be difficult for the victim to describe that uh, she was a victim of oral and anal penetrative sexual assaults. Usually, it is not difficult for her to uh, talk about uh, vaginal contact, but regarding oral and anal sexual contact, it is usually especially embarrassing way of acting. And in such situation, if a victim does not spontaneously give such uh, details, such, such information, doctor may need to ask direct questions regarding this type of acts, but very sensitively. Complete physical examination of a completely undressed person is very important and it is usually uh, performed like that if the person is in the clothing uh, in which the rape occurred. Usually the big piece of paper is put on the floor and the removing of the clothing, uh, the person uh, performs standing on this paper. Why? Because during this uh, removing the clothing, biological traces may be, uh, may, uh, may be uh, lost. And in such cases, they will be present on this paper. So it is practically uh, practical advice. So confirmation of applied force in such cases on the basis of finding, describing, and photographing of injuries. Once again, the absence of injuries does not exclude a rape even by the use of force. So not only by use of threat, but even in cases by the use of force, it may be a lack of injuries. In which cases, for example, multiple attackers fix the victim and prevent her resistance. In cases of large disparity in strength between the victim and the attacker, and if the attack was sudden. Injuries are divided in two main groups, so-called extragenital and genital. Extragenital injuries may be present all over the body in any part, but mostly 
have affected our scalp, it is skin of the head, face, especially around the nose and mouth due to gagging with the hand, neck, hands, breasts, belly, inner thighs, and buttocks. Genital may be either external and internal injuries of genital organs. Type of extragenital injuries, their classification, we said mostly mechanical and asphyctical. Mechanical injuries inflicted by blunt trauma, like abrasions, bruises, contusions, and lacerations. Cuts or incision inflicted by the blade of the weapon and stabs with the spike of the weapon in Serbian shilak, and the knife as a weapon has both a blade and a point. And we have already mentioned two main types of asphyxic injuries, smothering, covering the nose and mouth with the hand and squeezing of the neck with the hand of hands, it is throttling. What is important to do during this examination to make diagrams and photographs? Diagram like this should document a physical examination. For example, in this victim, there is a laceration, wound inflicted by blunt trauma was presented on the head, bruise with oval or circular uh, form in the left scapular region and the bruise in form, so-called, we called it uh, tram line bruise on the posterior part of the right thigh. Uh, thigh. Uh, this tram line bruise is very important uh, indication of the infliction of blows with some uh, elongated, uh, usually oval uh, weapon like a rod, uh, like a police button. And very important part of examination is take of photographs with a scale, with a ruler. I will explain why, because this application of ruler uh, applies uh, the opportunity to have an orientation about the size of injury. And I will explain uh, what is a proper description of this injury. It is a bruise or hematoma located in the region of left cheek, uh, left uh, zygomatic region. We can say and we can or we must uh, describe the proper location, form, size, and the color of the bruising. We can say that it is hematoma located in the left cheek area, which is approximately oval or round. Size, for example, diameter is 4.3. And the most important and very important part is the color. It is bluish or red bluish because the color of the bruise indicates the age of the bruise. I think that you, uh, that it is uh, something which is familiar and uh, it is well known that uh, uh, in living person, the bruise or hematoma will change the color. Firstly, it is blue or reddish blue. After that, changing in brown, green, finally yellow, and the final result is complete disappearing of bruising and just because of that, it is very important to find and uh, uh, collect evidence about such injuries in time before they are disappearing. Relatively used, uh, usual way of uh, applying the force is here pulling. So in some situation like in this, look at this, the hair is very dense and long. In this uh, situation, examination of the head or scalp is difficult. So minor bruises are difficult to determine. And in some situations, especially in fatal cases, we are obliged to remove the hair. And after removing the hair, all injuries can be or, or, or become visible. So uh, in some part of the hair, we can say uh, we can find the area without uh, hair. So this so-called traumatic alopecia, 
is usually sign of very intensive hair pulling. And sometimes this intensive pulling of the skin can produce avulsion of the scalp that a part of the skin of the head will be completely detached from the bone and this detached uh, space is filled with blood. It is also very important sign of very intensive pooling. Uh, relatively uh, frequent in such cases, pressure on the nose and the mouth with the hand occurs in order to prevent screaming and calling for help. Of course, the result will be external and in internal injuries of the nose and mouth. What can be found? Bruises, which are oval and circular from the finger pads. Abrasions, which could be arched and linear and very important stretches from nails of the perpetrator. Lacerations of the mucous membrane, open wounds of the lips and gums, and of course, injuries of the teeth. In this picture, you can see one linear semilunar abrasion on the right side of the nose caused by the nail pressure of the perpetrator. This injury is very slight. It's not health nor life threatening, but it is not interesting for medical doctor who wants to treat this person, but from medical legal point of view, it is very important and very maybe sometimes essential indicator of the applied force. And in clinical forensic medicine and clinical medical legal examination, such injuries that are medically slight and quickly pass without permanent traces can be a diagnostically significant indicator of violence. So the doctor, for example, in urgent center who wants to make a diagnosis of injuries of this girl, this abrasion is not at all interesting for this doctor, but for us in forensic pathology and in clinical forensic medicine, it is the most important finding in such cases. Strangling of the neck with the hand or hands will produce injuries on the skin of the neck in form of bruises, abrasions. Again, these injuries may be discoid according with the shape of finger pads or maybe linear or even semi-lunar uh, semi as a result of the pressure of the nail tips. Once again, once again, such finding can be found. And in such cases, because of pressure with hands on the veins in the neck, the stasis or the accumulating of the blood in vein venous system in the head can occur. And the result could be that small blood vessel will rupture because they are overfilled with the blood and the typical finding can be like in these pictures, particular small spotty uh, uh, bleedings or bruises in conjunctiva, in uh, facial skin. And it is said that such particular bruises which are found on the palate in the uh, mouth can indicate oral penetration of the penis. Clenching the upper arms with hands, bruises in the form of the finger pads or entire fingers will occur, and they will be in accordance with arrangement at capture, arrangement of the fingers at capture. I think that this picture is uh, by itself very illustrative. Also arrangement of fingers when grasping, Sometimes they, uh, these bruises can be even bigger, uh, even bigger and uh, uh, with uh, circular form. In this picture, you can see skin abrasion due to the hand tying. Sometimes handcuffs can be used or some other object for tying the hands. Very important in cases of sexual abuse and rape are bite marks. These bite marks may be found on the neck, shoulders, breasts, and buttock, and they may be produced only by biting, but uh, some situations, combination of biting and oral suction. In such situation, if oral suction is present, like in this picture, besides this 
linear change in form of abrasion of bruising, which were a result of the pressure of the teeth. In, in the middle of the change, uh, bruising or hematoma will occur. What is uh, the importance of this bike marks? V very important sign uh, of uh, rape as a crime, but also the, uh, these injuries are very important uh, in identification of the perpetrator, in which way this arrangement of teeth may be analyzed and uh, may be compared uh, with the arrangement in arrested and suspected perpetrators. And uh, is, it is a special forensic specialization. It is called forensic odontology. Uh, usually stomatologists or dentists uh, will deal with this problem. And also very important, if it is fresh bite marks, traces of saliva may be found on the surface and taking of swabs uh, may uh, be used for collecting these traces of swabs and DNA analysis, which I'll explain, can be used uh, for comparing and uh, for identification of the perpetrator. Once again, seriousness of injury uh, may be uh, in uh, different uh, steps or in different forms. Uh, qualification uh, in forensic medicine uh, divides injuries in slight, which are in cases of rape most often, may be serious and in some cases fatal, especially extend extensive bruises. We had a case of rape combined with the uh, very, very intensive uh, beating of the victim. In such cases, almost all surface of the body is covered with the bruises. And this uh, numerous uh, amount of bruises, both in skin and subcutaneous tissue, can be a cause of death by itself. Uh, we say that in such cases, the victim is raped and beaten to death, and the cause of death is fatal blood loss or the other term is exsanguination. Bruises on inner aspect of ties are very important. Uh, they usually occur due to the violent spreading of the violent spreading of the ties, like here. In all cases of attacks, including rapes, uh, defense injuries are very important. Why? Because if victim is in a conscious state and uh, is not uh, under threat and under influence on fear, the victim usually tries to defend herself. And there are two different ways of uh, defense. On the left side, you can see the defense by ward off the weapon. And on the uh, right side, by grasping the weapon. If we have cases of ward off the weapon, the uh, injuries will be located on the dorsal part of the head and form arms, like in this picture, or incisions produced by attempts to ward off the weapon also will be on the dorsal part of forearm and hand. On the other hand, if grasping the weapon is attempted in this situation, the incisions will be located on the volar or palmar part of the hand, and especially typical is incision, which is located in the area between the roots of thumb and index fingers. Case of the rape, on the left side, victim, you can see the bruises on her neck, obviously uh, squeezing by the hand was produced, but on the right side, you can see suspended attacker, and you can see finding the strict abrasions caused, of course, by fingernails of the victim, and uh, it is defense injury on the attacker. So woman usually defends herself with her nails and teeth. Proving sexual assault, in which way it is possible to confirm recent sexual intercourse? by means of signs of intercourse or defloration, and the most important presence of a seminal fluid or on or in the body of the victim. Genital injuries are discovered by gynecol uh, gynecological examination. And of course, these injuries are the most important evidence in cases of sexual offenses. 
and examination should be performed in the correct order and as soon as possible not to lose valuable forensic evidence but it is important to point, point out that genital injuries do not necessarily occur in all cases of rape so once again the absence of these injuries does not exclude rape Injuries of the external genitals might be, might be in form of bruises, abra abrasions, contusions, lacerations. Look at this, it is bruised on the labia uh, majora on the right side. And regarding genital injuries and gynecolog uh, gynecological examination, very important is the examination of the presence and the state of hymen. Defloration represents uh, the first penetration of the penis or an object, other object of sufficient thickness to cause injury to the hymen. We know that the hymen is a membrane at the introitus of vagina. And I will explain you in which way we make this examination and our conclusion. It was case from 2005. It was the murder of a 13-year-old girl. You can see obvious multiple stabbed wounds. The perpetrator was a 42-year-old man. He was previously convicted of raping a girl, and in this case, because of that, rape was suspected again. Uh, but in this situation, you will see that uh, by examination uh, of uh, this area, we found intact hymen, but uh, without any signs of sexual assault. So. In such case, the conclusion is that uh, sexual intercourse probably was not performed. And uh, in new newspapers, uh, this uh, title and uh, chapter applied, slaughtered a girl who wanted to help him. Finally, you can see the result. He was sentenced in the district court in Belgrade to 40 years in prison with a combined sentence because he killed this 13-year-old girl in a treacherous manner and for rape and unnatural fornication against the other 12 years old girl in Opovo. It was five months earlier. So it was said in the verdict, it was undoubtedly established that he, on November 21st, 2005, on the road near the train station in Batajnica, killed this girl in a tre treacherous way when the girl came to help him. After he fell, he inflicted her 19 faithful stabs in the back and chest with a kitchen knife. And it was one of the cases because of which in 2019, the sentence of life imprisonment was reinstated in our criminal code. The previous crime occurred five months before the murder and uh, it was reported that he took the 12 year old girl to the forest beat and raped her while she was unconscious and the doctors found a ruptured hymen, a concussion and numerous bruises on her body. Regarding hymen, a uh, normal finding it is that is usually annular in the form of the ring with the opening edge and rim. Many different uh, shapes of hymen may be present and uh, uh, difference between signs of ruptured Hymen and the special uh, form of the rupture, which is physiological, is a matter of work of gynecologists. But it is important for general knowledge that on the hymen, so-called congenital incision may be present. And the most important feature of this congenital incision, which is not the result of penetration of the penis, that it does not cover the entire width of the rim from the edge to the base. On the other side, acquired tear or laceration cover the entire width. And the problem is that when penetration occurs and defloration, the signs of so-called recent uh, tear and laceration exist only three to five days. So the even of this rupture, uh, the edge of this uh, rupture is uneven, bruised, covered with blood, but already after three to five days, complete healing will occur and 
with this complete healing uh, when defloration occurred and such a uh, complete tear is found. For example, with this signs of healing, uh, a medical legal expert can only say that this occurred at least three to five days before examination, but whether it occurred before seven, 70 or 700 days, it is not important or it is not possible to say. In some situation, highly elastic hymen can occur, hyper elastic hymen, but uh, it is relatively rare that uh, this elasticity is so big that even penetration of penis will not produce the laceration of the hymen. And the conclusion is anatomical finding of the entire intact hymen. If the hyperelastic hymen is excluded, is a sure proof that defloration has not been performed. Regarding internal genitalia, they uh, are discovered by internal uh, gynecological examination. Uh, injuries of these internal genital organs are usually absent. They uh, might be informed of the bruises, abrasions, and lacerations of the vagina. More often in older women and children, and when penetration is performed with an other object than penis, mostly in cases when there is big disproportion between the size of penetrating object and the size of genital organs. Bleeding from the vagina always raises suspicion of the exist, uh, existence, uh, existence of an injury, and all, uh, always anus, anus and its surroundings must be properly and tolerably examined, abrasions, bruises, fissures, and splits may be found. Very important is to avoid misinterpretation of findings and injuries, which is relatively frequent and often if examination and opinions are given by uh, medical doctors, which are not well educated and experienced. First, Extragenital injuries from rough voluntary sexual or inter, uh, intercourse can occur. For example, bruises on the neck, linear abrasion from fingernails, therefore, they are not uh, always the signs of rape. Also, genital injuries can also occur during voluntary intercourse. Reddening of the mucous membrane or the vagina sometimes is mis misinterpreted as a sure sign of injury. And finally, anal injuries can also occur with long-term constipation. You know what it is, problem with uh, uh, defecation. In this picture, you can see anal, uh, a region of anus of a nine-year-old boy. And uh, in small kids, uh, usual phys ph physiological normal finding is that the uh, area around the anus is usually hyperpigmented. You can see that it is brownish in color and it is normal finding, but for many years it was misinterpreted as a sign of long-term violence and repeated anal penetrations. And I suppose that many, many or some uh, people finished uh, in uh, in the prison, and they were innocent only on the basis of this misinterpretation uh, mis uh, of this finding. In this picture, you can see girl with the linear abrasion scratches, but uh, I think that you will agree with me that this uh, position and distribution is relatively uh, regular which is not uh, usual for rape cases. So in such cases, but not, not very frequent, we have to think about the possibility of self-injuring, false accusation of rape after a vol uh, voluntary sexual act because, for example, shame, fear of the family, et cetera, et cetera. And I found uh, uh, one title and uh, article in the newspapers of course, the problematic uh, is to be sure that it was uh, true because in newspapers uh, usually appears many, many sensationalistic uh, uh, news. Uh, 
uh, it was said that a 13 year old woman invented invented rape and maniac uh, and 30 year old woman falsely reported to the police that she was raped in the parking lot she re read news in the newspaper about serial rapists who have been ramping through Belgrade for the past few weeks she wanted her case to be published in the media so that her ex-boyfriend would feel sorry for her and return to her yeah of, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, something that I knew in newspaper I don't know whether it was true or not but it is said that uh, it was uh, suspicious for police that she reported the case uh, 12 hours after this uh, event and finally on the basis of medical examination uh, it was concluded that it was self-injuring. How to uh, prove the use of the threat? Assessment of the existence, once again, jurisdiction of the court, and we have already mentioned this. The next step, which is very important, is providing material for traceological analysis. Biological traces are very important. Semen, saliva, blood, hair, and epidermis, and it is very important to find traces of the perpetrator on the victim, and conversely traces of the victim on the perpetrator in order to put them in the same event of course dna analysis together uh, today is the most important for this uh, proving reference samples uh, which are used for dna analysis and taken obligatory are the following the reference sample is taken as a swab of the buccal mucose of the victim. Swabs are mandatory taken from external genitalia, internal genital organs, the posterior wall of the vagina and the external opening of the cervix, anus and perineum. Perineum is area between the vagina and uh, anus, oral cavity, arches of the lips and bones of the oral cavity, others, for example, bites. I have already mentioned that all swabs will be mandatory collecting uh, irrespective of the anamnestic data because I have already mentioned that the uh, data about oral and uh, anal sex is usually difficult to obtain from the victim. Very important is under nail content or nail clippings. The whole nails may be clipped off. And hairs, scalp and pubic hairs are take, uh, taken. Uh, in many countries, special and specially already prepared examination kits are used. They contain the necessary means to systematically collect biological samples. I don't think so that uh, these kits are present in Serbia. In this picture, you can see taking the swab from the surface of the skin. Very important taking of the swab from the surface of the bite once again in order to collect the saliva. Semen sperm may be found in many places like sexual organs of men and women, alive or dead. It is important in fatal cases to know that spermatozoa can remain alive for several days after that, and they be, then can be found even alive in the genital organs of the victim. Around the anus or in the rectum, in the genital area, on the thighs and on other parts of the body, in the oral cavity, on the clothes of the victim and the perpetrator, and some objects from the environment at the site of event, how to prove uh, whether it is the sperm, I don't want to be boring with the detail uh, explaining different methods because the most important is to find presence of spermatozoa microscopically. Look at this, it is obvious. And when one whole spermatozoan is found, it is sufficient proof and certain proof of the presence of the sperm. Problem is that a negative finding of spermatozoa and crystals of sperm does not rule out that it is sperm. How to explain this? Because spermatozoa may be missing when, in case of azospermia, 
it is a state when there is a sperm, but completely without spermatozoa in the sperm. Due to old age, early youth, serious diseases, sterility, and diseases of the sexual organs, and after frequent ejaculations. Also, spermatozoa may disappear from sperm due to this integration. And the conclusion is, if we find the spermatozoa, it is a positive proof of the presence of the semen. If the uh, result of examination is negative, uh, it does not uh, necessarily exclude that the sperm was present. And is it of human origin? The most important differences are made by microscope and also immunology. Uh, human proteins can be found by precipitation, but from which person does it come? DNA analy analysis in, is uh, the most important. Uh, only a few words, the DNA profile of the sperm found in the rape victim can be compared to the DNA profile of the suspected per per perpetrator, and it is certain method. Now we have DNA previously by classical blood groupings, you know, blood groups A, B, O, and A, B. On the basis of these blood groups, only exclusion could be made. For example, if semen was found in uh, the, the uh, genital organs, in, if the person was so-called secretor. Secretor was a person, is a person who uh, uh, excrete the uh, molecules which are uh, the same with the blood groups molecules so they can be found in the blood but also in saliva in semen etc etc so on the basis of the analysis we could say for example that the person was of uh, blood group A what does it mean it means that only or all persons with this uh, blood group A can be uh, the possible victim and all persons with other blood groups are excluded. And I will uh, make a short presentation uh, about the birth of forensic genetics. So you will see what is the differenti differentiation between importance of uh, DNA analysis and blood groupings. In 1983, a young girl was found dead and raped, and uh, it was proved uh, by uh, means of analysis of the sperm traces that uh, attacker has uh, blood, blood group A, like, unfortunately, 10% of the population. So three years uh, uh, later, the other young girl was found raped and murdered. Again, attacker had the uh, blood type A, and it was interesting that one guy, uh, their name uh, of his was Richard Buckland, uh, he was arrested and confessed that he was perpetrator, but his blood group was O. What does it <laughs> It is, he was excluded. Uh, what was the reason for confession? I cannot explain, but in that time, it was the first uh, time that uh, DNA analysis was applied in forensic analysis, in forensic genetics. The name of this scientist is Sir Alec Jeffries, and he conducts DNA analysis and he confirmed that Buckland was not perpetrator of this, uh, of this uh, crime. And the next step, was that all people in this area with age between 15 and uh, 55 was collected and uh, uh, samples for DNA analysis was, uh, were taken and they were compared with DNA profile of the perpetrator and no one of these persons had the same DNA profile. So the next step, Pub stories can be dangerous because in one pub, a young guy, young Kelly, admits that he gave blood instead of calling Pitchfork. Calling Pitchfork asked him to go to the police and give this sample instead of him. When he confessed to the police, Colin Pitchfork was arrested. DNA analysis was made and it was proved that he was a attacker and a, a rapist and murderer. And very interesting 
6,000 DNA profiles after that should have been or they were completely destroyed because in normal situation, especially in cases of this uh, uh, rapist, uh, uh, which uh, several times are included in rape cases, uh, after uh, sentence, which is finally accepted, DNA profile can be collected and preserved. In all other cases, DNA profile cannot be used by police. Also under nail contact or nail clippings, so in this case, uh, the girl tried to attempt her by scratching the skin of the perpetrator. What does it mean? It means that under the victim's fingernails, remains of the attacker's epidermis will be found, but the prerequisition for diagnosing is to arrest the perpetrator, to make his DNA profile and to compare with DNA profile of these remnants under the nails of the girl. Also, hairs are very important. The victim's hair on the attacker, the attacker's hair on the victim, and hairs on the objects and the surroundings. So hair arrangement may be very important for uh, reconstruction of way of playing the, the event and also identification of the attacker, either on the basis of microscopic or examination of the hair on the much better with DNA analysis. We had a case, a woman, she was raped and beaten to death. And during the autopsy, numerous strands of her long brown hair her were found on the victim, but also short gray hairs identical to the perpetrator's hair were found on the palm of her right hand. Finally, when <clears throat> he was faced with this evidence, the perpetrator stated that he held her by the hair and slammed her head on the floor during which she defended herself and pulled his hair. Of course, in such cases, after 1983, DNA analysis of this hair traces uh, is a final and uh, conclusive proof. Providing materials for toxicology, toxicological analysis uh, is very important in cases uh, when the victim was under influence of psychoactive substances. Regarding this, it is important to say which uh, samples are always taken, blood and nasal swabs, because of sniffing of the drugs especially, so it will be indication if we have positive findings of acute intake of the toxicological samples. In urine, acute and early intake uh, is uh, uh, found. What does it mean? After the presence in the blood, the elimination of the toxin will be in urine. And in urine, uh, we will find the, uh, the traces of to uh, toxins uh, a few days longer than in blood. And uh, nowadays, hair uh, may be uh, used for uh, detection of the uh, deposited uh, poisons, but it is a sign of earlier in intake. Uh, for your information, it is uh, important to say that retention of poisons in the body after ingestion is up to about three days. For alcohol, 24 hours. What does it mean? After 24 hours in person's body, alcohol will not be present because or due to disintegration and elimination. Only metabolites of cannabis may be found in urine up to seven days and after uh, on the finally, uh, if we find the toxin in the hair, it is a sign of earlier intake and it is deposited. So clothing must be properly identified, photographed and preserved and after inspection, uh, which is important to be found damages biological traces and also traces of non-biological origin, like, for example, grass, earth, sand. They can be found on the body and clothes of both the victim and the suspect on the basis of which these persons can be connected with the place. 
it is very important, especially in identification and uh, arresting of perpetrator. And finally, during any sexual intercourse, bloodborne and sexually transmitted infections may occur, uh, may occur. So it is very important to make this analysis. Bloodborne infections is HIV and uh, uh, hepatitis B and C. Sexually transmitted infections are syphilis, gonorrhea, and infections caused by chlamydia, mycoplasma, and ureal plasma. The final step, of course, if possible, an examination of the suspected perpetrator should be carried out as soon as possible. In this case that we have already presented, Sasha Mega was arrested, but the other guy who uh, made a rape together with Sasha Mega, it is said that they are still looking for him and the Belgrade police are intensively searching for another person. Finally, he was uh, found. Uh, the purpose and the task of examination are almost the same as in a uh, victim, uh, determining, uh, determining and documenting of physical injuries, uh, especially anatomical details of his genitalia and uh, analysis if he was potent or impotent, of course, in cases of alleged copulation biological traces, toxicological analysis, and uh, blood and sexually transmitted infections. The way of analysis is the same. The most important is to find eventually present injuries which occurred due to this rape act, especially in attempt of victim to defend, defend herself. So a woman, again, usually defends herself with her nails, teeth, Scratches, bites on the attacker's hand, face, and neck can be found. Which biological samples are taken from him? Reference sample for discovering of his DNA profile. Again, swab of the buccal mucosa. Very important for male pain perpetrator, swabs from the pen penis. Why? Because vaginal epithelial cell desconnected during intercourse can be identified on the penis up to 48 hours after intercourse, again, under nail content or nail clippings, hairs, and of course, biological tra uh, traces. This case we have already presented, but in this case, remains of the victim's epidermis may be found under the fingernails on the attacker. What does it mean? If we, we arrest the ta uh, attacker, take this under nail uh, contents, make DNA analysis under his under nails, material epidermis with the same then, uh, uh, DNA profile as DNA uh, profile of the victim is presented and it is a certain sign that they were in contact. What happens uh, in reality? Uh, uh, perpetrators, when they are arrested, usually deny that they were included in, in this case. But when they are faced with the evidence that DNA material of the victim was found on them, or conversely, that his DNA profile was found in some remains on the victim, after this confession of the crime usually occurs. The biggest problem occurs and uh, can occur in such situation. It is uh, uh, still uh, still actual case in Serbia, uh, and uh, these uh, uh, sentences are from the media, not from the court uh, papers. Teacher of acting accused of sexual abusing seven female students. It is said that seven girls, some of whom are minors reported to the police that they were raped or sexually abused by the famous owner of the acting school. Reporting, unfortunately, nine years after the event. So the, the suspect, of course, denies having committed these crimes and the problem, how to pass judgment if there is no medical or other material evidence, but there are only contradictory statements of the defendant and the injured parts. And 
We are near the end. Uh, a few words about the interpretation of findings in forensic expertise. There is often difficulty in interpretation of findings in both clinical and forensic pathology, especially when only minimal evidence is present on the victim. The following questions need to be answered. We shall go step by step. The first question is, is there any evidence of previous sexual intercourse at any time. In this situation, of course, many varieties of hymen structures may be found in the adolescent female, female, and because of that, a very educated gynecologist must interpret whether this form of the hymen uh, is a sign of uh, normal anatomical, uh, appearance or it is a sign of previous laceration and defloration. But an intact hymen determines the evidence of virginity or lack of previous penetration uh, with exclusion of cases with hyperelastic hymen. But this lack of signs of uh, defloration does not exclude sexual activity of course, these activities uh, which do not affect the hymen and their anatomical appearance. For example, short penetration and technically rape can occur from even the minimal passage of penis between the labia. Evidence of intercourse may be uh, assumed from healed tears of hymen. hymen. It is said that we have uh, tears which are completely healed. And of course, evidence of previous pregnancy, such as all damage to the service and breast changes is almost positive evidence of previous sexual intercourse. The second important question, is there signs of recent sexual intercourse? What can be found? Of course, sexual intercourse, either voluntary or involuntary may occur, without any findings. So lack of evidence does not exclude the previous sexual intercourse, even rape. The labia may be red and inflamed with a slight edema of the vaginal entrance. Very important is a recently ruptured hymen. So signs of defloration, we have already mentioned that uh, edges are with swelling. Row unepithelialized age and bleeding may be found, but today it is relatively uncommon finding, except in children and previously virginal young persons. And of course, the presence of semen once again is a certain sign of the best evidence of sexual intercourse. But of course, with ejaculation, the problem use of condom will prevent this finding. And if a recent intercourse has taken place, was it by force? Of course, this may be obvious in the presence of gross injury, especially in children, when, for example, vaginal or rectal tearing has occurred, or where there is obvious abrasion, bruising, or laceration of the vulva, anal margins of perineum, then this can hardly be compatible with voluntary intercourse. It is usually a sign of rape. But even in case with relatively slight and injury is confined to hyperemia and edema of the vaginal entrance and where abrasion and bruising of the vulva is slight, the possibility that intercourse was by force still exists. The possibility of sexually motivated assault without actual penal penetration must be considered when no semen can be recovered and a severe damage can be caused, of course, no with penis, but by digital or instrumental trauma. Interpretation of physical findings in persons who report that they have experienced sexual violence is very difficult. And despite the fact that the medical examination of the victim is only one part of the investigation, the public, and many professionals, unfortunately, including many doctors, have unrealistic ideas about what conclusions can be reached after a medical examination. Prejudice is that the absence of physical injuries indicates 
the victim's consent to sexual intercourse, it is not true. Based only on the presence or absence of genital and extragenital injuries, it is difficult to determine whether it was actually sense sexual intercourse with consent or without it. Because of that, complete assessment of the case and the collected medical and non-medical facts, facts is important. Once again, the absence of extragenital and genital injuries must not be interpreted as the victim's consent. That is a finding that excludes the rape. On the other hand, the presence of extragenital and genital injuries is not a sure sign of rape. Some specificity regarding kids. In cases of sexual abuse of kids, positive bodily findings are usually minimal or absent, and it is very frequent. Second, this exam examination must be performed by specially trained doctors. The examiners must be both familiar with normal childhood behavior, development, genital and anal anatomy, and if we have more than one examiners, they should examine the child together. Again, to avoid secondary uh, victimization and the examination should be carried out in the presence of a trusted adult. Usually it is child's mother. The whole child should be examined in the same manner as an adult person. And the most important is try to find signs associated with trauma. And if there are these signs are the same as in older person. For example, bruises, grip marks, love bites, teeth marks and scratches, as well as injuries within the mouth. In most situations, like in older person, the disclosure involves past abuse, that it is not recent rape, but that the event occurred many days or even many, many weeks uh, before reporting. And in such situation, examination can be planned. It can be delayed to suit the child and family. But this delay should be minimized in the following circumstances. If this abuse has occurred within the previous 72 hours, if there is a history of acute trauma, and if there is a possibility of pregnancy resulting from the abuse, so that the post contraception must be prescribed. In these tables, you can sign, but it is a medical question, which are signs uh, which are non-specific when seen within 72 hours, signs which are supportive and signs which are diagnostic of penetrating injuries in region of vagina. We shall mention this third group, fresh laceration of hymen, all tear in hymen that may have healed, and uh, uh, the, uh, it is called uh, flexidity of hymen, disappearance of hymen or rim, usually posteriorly. But I must say that I, as forensic pathologist, uh, this part is not part of my work. My uh, part of my work are extragenital injuries, but it is something which is a part of gynecological examination. In the same time, the signs uh, which are diagnostic for anal penetration and anal sexual intercourse are divided in three groups, non-specific, supportive, and which are sure signs, last, like fresh laceration, heel scar, which extend beyond and margin onto perineal skin in the absence of a reasonable alternative explanation. Important is that there may be no physical findings in more than one half of the children examined for the suspected sexual abuse. The absence of, absence of physical signs neither confirms nor negates the diagnosis of sexual abuse. Uh, regarding the person who are included in forensic procedure, the court must not uh, request from the expert to testify on legal issues, nor may the expert engage in this on guilt, premeditation, etc. So I can remember the case when the gynecologist was an expert in the case of alleged rape. 
he persons, uh, persistently claimed in the court that the bruises on the girl's thighs were caused by rape. When asked how he explained his very, very stiff and categoric stance, he stated, I think the girl is telling the truth, and if she is my daughter, I would kill the perpetrator. Of course, something which is not acceptable in the court procedure. Unfortunately, the girl soon admitted that there was no rape and that she had injured herself by pinching in order to accuse the young man of rape. So once again, the final conclusion must be <clears throat> one detailed analysis on, on not only of medical evidences, but a complete, complete case. Uh, and a few minutes, I think that maybe <clears throat> a few minutes will be longer than uh, half past four, but it is one of cases in which I was included as a forensic expert together with the gynecologist. And uh, this uh, case is still actual. There are no names of the, of the actors. And uh, in uh, order on conducting the investigation of the higher public prosecutor's office states that there is a, a suspicion that girl uh, born in 1961, in the period from February 2021 to February 2002, in an apartment within the family house, using force and threats, forced the child, so uh, it is a perpetrator, his granddaughter, which uh, is born on October 2009, to have sex with him. It is said that in February 2001, in his apartment, he began to touch her on the body and began to remove her clothes and underwear, during which she resisted with her hands, but he overcame her resistance, then took out his penis and used it to penetrate the mouth of the injured child, so that after five minutes, he ordered her to lie down on her stomach. It is quotation from uh, the uh, court document with his penis during which he ejaculated on the third shirt. That was next to the bed. At the beginning of February 2002, he again invited the victim to the apartment, ordered her to undress to lie on her stomach, after which he performed vaginal penetration with his penis, during which he ejaculated into the cloth on the bed. On March, 2002, when she was 12 years and uh, five months old, the girl was examined. And I have to mention that we have only one department for gynecological, uh, for, for juvenile gynecology. It is Department of Child and Adolescent Gynecology of the Institute for Maternal and Child Health Care in a New Belgrade. And uh, she was examined by specialists in gynecology and obstet uh, obstetrics. Uh, regarding an amnestic data, uh, uh, all data that were mentioned in this court document were presented in the doctor uh, 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 report. And uh, the most important part of this examination, clinical examination. Uh, there were no signs of fresh extragenital injuries. So good development of secondary sexual characteristic was established. External genitalia of normal appearance were estrogenized, and on the hymenal membrane, splits were found to the base at uh, two, five, and uh, it is uh, this location is uh, compared with the position of the uh, numbers on the on the clock. So base at uh, two, five, and nine o'clock, as well as a split at eleven o'clock that covers more than. Two, uh, two thirds of the uh, height of the volumen. So everything uh, other was in uh, uh, normal finding. Uh, Anal sphincter was normal. And uh, during the examination, a swab, a swab of the vagina and cervix, vaginal secretion and samples for microbiological, uh, microbiological examination were taken. On the basis of information, that the last physical contact occurred about a month before the examination, there were no indications for the taking of biological traces because 
no biological traces were expected according to the circumstances. In the, in the, in the conclusion, the gynecologist wrote the following. The gynecological findings clearly indicate that the girl had penetrative vaginal intercourse and that the examination established complete epithelization of the hymenal membrane. In the submitted case files, we have no information about the performed control and the results of the microbiological examination of the samples taken. So we have only finding of the old tiers of hymen. Questions in the order for medical legal expertise were following. Did medical examination show signs which indicated copulation or some other sexual uh, act occur or was previously performed on her? If such signs were found, is it possible to determine the time when the sexual act first occurred and whether it is possible to determine how long before the medical examination on March 9, 2022, the last copulation occurred? So our opinion was as following. Gynecological examination on March 9th, 2024, uh, uh, two when she was 12 years and five months old, revealed the presence of three tears was found on the hymen, extending the entire width. This position was already mentioned with signs of epitalization, which does it, it means that the, uh, these uh, lacerations are uh, old more than three to five days. The appearance of these tears uh, gives the conclusion that they were so-called old heel tears of the hymen, which occurred at least three to five days before the gynecological examination. Therefore, the mentioned gynecological findings point with certainty to the conclusion that defloration occurred in her, possibly as a result of sexual intercourse, that is, the penetration of a male penis into the vagina, but it could also have happened due to the penetration of another oblong shaped object like a finger. On the basis of this medical evidence, it can only be asserted with certainty that the defloration took place at least three to five days before the gynecological examination but it is not possible to determine more precisely the time, day and year of defloration. In this particular case, it cannot be ruled out that this occurred in February 2021. It is not possible to determine how long before the medical examination, the last copulation event eventually occurred, but it cannot be ruled out that it happened at the beginning of February 2022, as stated in the order on conducting the investigation. It is also not possible to rule out that in February 2021, there was penetration of the penis into the, uh, her oral cavity, but it cannot be claimed that it actually happened. And finally, reminder. The time interval elapsed from the committed sexual violence to the examination of the victim is critical for the findings. And if it is not performed during the first 72 hours, we cannot expect to find many, many, many uh, physical findings, neither biological traces. In the presented case, the delayed physical examination of the rape victim and the assailant makes it very difficult and often impossible to collect objective medical evidence of the rape related to the genital and extragenital bodily injuries and biological traces. You can see that in such cases, the experts answer to the questions of the court are often in the form. Based on the available and objectively determined medical facts, it cannot be ruled out, but it cannot be claimed either. So it's up to court to make the decision. 
Passing a guilty verdict is then very difficult, even when all the circumstances indicate that the rape took place. And finally, we have mentioned that 97% of rapists was law free, very astonishing and warning number. In order to reduce this devastating number, it is extremely important that the media talk about rape and other crimes against sexual freedom much more than before, primor primarily with the aim of warning potential victims of the importance of timely reporting the case and an urgent physical examination. Unfortunately, media usually uh, are talking only about sensations and sen sensational cases without any educative uh, information and messages. This is extremely important, not only in order to objectively prove the rape committed and to adequately punish the perpetrator, but also to provide the victim with appropriate medical assistance as soon as possible so that the physical and psychological consequences of the rape on her health are as minimal as possible. Thanks a lot for your attention. One nice picture at the end, because we I, I mentioned many, many uh, rough and, and difficult uh, information and pictures. So taking a look of this cute boy and girl, we can make a discussion and I'm ready to answer the question. I hope that I fulfilled your expectancies. Da, da li neko sada posle ovog, ja nekako mislim da je to toliko bilo sve iscrpno s jedne strane, s druge strane novo, s treće strane i ono što smo nešto znali, pa znali malo smo posložili, tako da ne znam, mislim da naravno ako ima pitanja, izvolite. Janeta. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry. Thank you a lot for your presentation. I would like to know how long does a physical examination takes? So how long? Um, so it mm, so it depends. It depends on the the, the uh, findings and the especially number of injuries. And the problem is that uh, in Serbia it is not still not organized that this examination will uh, be performed at one site, at one place. So previously in our institute, uh, we organized uh, so-called ambulance for clinical forensic medicine. And the first part of the examination was bodily examination made or performed by a forensic pathologist. And after that gynecologist came uh, to same ambulance and this gynecological part and taking the uh, samples uh, was made. So it is difficult to uh, say uh, general information, but it is it is time consuming. Of course, it is uh, of course it is important to do it so thorough and so so detailed as possible because if we are uh, in a lack of a lack of time. <clears throat> many many information and evidence could be lost so it is difficult to, to to say how long and especially if there are many injuries each injury must be described photographed and it is better to take even more than one hours and couple of hours and that you are fully aware that you finished your job uh, in a proper manner and is the person allowed to urinate in between? Because I can imagine. Uh, I, I didn't hear. <laughs> if it is, I didn't didn't hear. Can you can you? Uh, yes. Uh, is it possible that uh, the victim or the the person is able to urinate in between? Because if it takes so long, I mean, and you are a female, it is, it is possible. Yeah. So. Uh, 
because I really have no experience with this taking urine uh, because now uh, this practice of uh, uh, gathering of, of uh, different specialists uh, is not uh, actual anymore. So of course it could be that uh, there is no urine, of course, and uh, uh, in such case, uh, uh, urine is an additional material. Of course, blood is the most important and uh, urine is additional uh, material and sample which can give additional examination. But the blood, uh, once again, is the most important. And of course, if taking of blood is uh, performed uh, in a short uh, interval after the, the rape. And we said once again that in cases of alcohol influence, there is a possible time of 24 hours. After 24 hours, alcohol will disappear. And for other substances, up to three days. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh Ja samo da se ja ne tamo ja mislim da je ne tamo mislila pošto je to užasno dugačak pregled. Da li žene jednostavno je dozvoljeno da se prekine pregled i da ode jednostavno da piše? Ja sam ja mislim da je to ja ne tamo pitala. Da li može to ili ili kad krene pregled ne sme ništa ni da. No, no, it's possible. It's possible. Maybe it's it's better to take such such samples immediately. Znači možda je bolje da ona odmah na početku pregleda. Znači, pokuša, naravno, prekid pregleda ništa neće promeniti. Ono što smo mi rekli, možda da kažem da taj prekid kao teorija predviđa da žena može da u bilo kom trenutku dozvolu koju je dala povuče. Međutim, moram da kažem, evo ti, Liljo, verovatno znaš da je to donekle u suprotnosti sa našim zakonom, jer naš zakonik o prijevičnom postupku kaže da pregled i uzimanje uzoraka se može izvršiti i bez dozvole, pre svega okrivljenog, a onda i drugih lica ukoliko je to u interesu završavanja slučaja. Što znači da bi u suštini mi recimo kad vršimo pregled, bez obzira da li je telesno nasilje ili seksualno, mi obavezno dobijamo pristanak koji je potpisan, objasnimo o čemu se radi, ali praktično može da bude problem ovo što kažu u svim knjigama ćete naći, žrtva može da povuče dozvolu. Ali naš zakon u suštini predviđa mogućno da se ona primora maltene na pregle, što ne znam kako bi se izvelo, jer možda bi ta formulacija zakonske materije mogla malo da se promeni. Ali u praksi, ja nisam imao takvih situacija i moram da kažem da ja, evo sad ovo što sam pričao, nemam, evo ovaj posljednji slučaj, trenutno imam dva slična koja se radi, pogledao sam svoja ranija veštačenja, nemam ih mnogo i ono što ja mislim, Miljo, da jeste problem kod nas naročito, da jednostavno nemamo sistem pregleda žrtava da jednostavno vi nemate sistem. Ja sam 95. dve godine sam bio u Švedskoj, tamo nema načina da se izbedne pregled, znači nema improvizacija, sve se zna. Postoje posebne službe, posebni policajci, posebne klinike za to. Kod nas, ja mislim da situacija u odnosu na vreme kada je Đorđe napisao doktorsku disertaciju da se uopšte nije popravila, čak da ne kažem možda i gora nego što je bilo. Upravo to. U nekim godinama je ovo što govoriš, kad je ustanovljena ta ambulanta, ja znam da smo i mi žene uključivali tamo i zajedno sa nama je taj deo šta one tamo mogu i sa vašim pristupom tvojim i Đorđevim. Nekako posle toga je sve to otišlo. Znaš, evo sad, razlog je uvek šta? Razlog uvek bude novac. Moram da kažem, zato što ambulanta za kliničku sudsku medicinu radi po principu dobrovojnih pregleda, malte ne pregled kod privatnog lekara. Tako je, da. Znači, jedna privatna ustanova, Bell Medic i šta ja znam, iz što kaže, ajde ako je neko baš toliko u nekom teškom stanju, ali naravno uvek bude koliko para toliko i muzike. I tu sam taj pregled. I problem je što smo mi ti godinu i po dana imali plaćene preglede za žrtve nasilja od strane gradskog 
sekretarijata za zdravlje. I tad smo imali preglede. Kako je to prestalo pregleda? Nema i mi stalno pričamo da bi to moglo da uđe, jer to odmah da kažem, znači neki pregled telesni, verovatno za seksualno nasilje ide više zbog uzoraka, bude negde oko 6000. Znači u rangu nekog privatnog pregleda lekara, da to uđe u obaveznu zdravstvenu zaštitu. Međutim, takve promene korenite kod nas će teško biti, tako da Zaista ja nemam predstavu, a sigurno da silovanje nije iščezlo, naprotiv, o tome se toliko priča i ono što ja kažem u medijima je interesantno kad se pojavi ovaj serijski silovatelj, pa ga jurimo tri dana, pa ga nađemo, pa ga slikamo i sve, i posle toga više nije zanimljivo. Tako je. Da, nažalost. Znači, samo da kažem, znači, ova prezentacija je snimljena data, znači, svi slušalci mogu da je preuzmu, ja sam poslao, ja ću ti sada, pošto sam ja uneo neke male još, možda da porteljem ove nove verzije, mislim da je bilo interesantno da vam pokažem ono kako je ušla forenzička genetika i kakve su razlike između krvni grupa i DNK analize, jer od tada se situacija okrenula potpuno i... To sam ubacio, pa da biste vi imali, ja ću ti sad poslati, znači, definitivnu verziju na srpskom i engleskom. Znači, ja se zahvaljujem, zaista, ja sam mislio da ću završiti mnogo ranije. Ja se zahvaljujem tebi i ja mislim, možda je sad, ti si rekao na kraju, slajdovi ove fotografije su kao uznemirujuće, pa između toga da smo mi neko ko radi to i gleda te fotografije i toga šta preživi žena ili dete koje je seksualno zlostavljeno, pa ajde da dozvolimo da nas uznemire te fotografije. Mislim da to nije ništa nešto što čime treba sada. To je kao kad se gleda film, pa kaže neću da gledam strašan film. Nego ću da gledam samo. Tako da mislim da je ovo bilo jako bitno i da ovaj i tvoje priče i ovih fotografija koje su takve, ali su životne. Meni je bilo sve to kako treba i mislim da će svaka od nas, svaka od nas iz svog domena, iz ovog što si govorio i bit će to i na YouTube-u, uvek pronaći tačke koje će da koriste u radu sa klijentima, kao neko ko će da bude svedok na sudu, da obavesti roditelje, da da podršku ženi, da žena zna šta sve, šta je sve očekuje, da zna nekad i ceo taj postupak šta sve treba da se uzme. Mislim da su te, ja ih vidim kao jako važne stvari. Tako da, hvala ti. Hvala vama, bilo mi je veliko zadovoljstvo i hvala još jednom što sam primljen, što kaže, u divnom društvu je uvek veliko uživanje biti. Sad sem Lilje, sa kojom sam stvarno, što kaže, stari drugar, Ja pozdravljam i sve ostale slušalce, zahvaljujem se, siguran sam da ćemo lepo sarađivati, da ću ja imati prilike da čujem što kaže i druge, jer evo, uči se celog života, pa i kad odeš u penziju i tekako može da se nauči mnogo. Hvala puno. Hvala svima. Hvala. Hvala vam.